I'm on this American Standard heat pump system. Um, a little while ago I wrote up a defrost board and sensors. Uh, I'm just going to show you kind of roughly how to do that repair. Um, I've actually done it, so I'm just going to go through the steps, but first off you just want to pull power. Um, this is just a fuse disconnect. I'm going to pull that out. Um, I like just setting it on top just so I know for sure it's out. Um, you can actually flip it and put it back in upside down. It actually says off right here. Uh, I don't really do that that off. I just like leaving it out. Uh, that way I know for sure it's off. Um, you'll kind of see that I still have LEDs flashing and on uh, on these two boards. That's because I'm getting low voltage from the indoor unit. So I always say, you know, test, make sure you have no power though with either a voltmeter or volt pin. Uh, meter is always a little better in my opinion. Uh, just make sure you have no power. Um, and you know, your power is coming in here. Uh, this is all wire nutted. Um, but yeah, next you basically just pull all these wires off. I always recommend taking a picture first to make sure you're gonna put them where they go. Um, but this is kind of your 24 volt feed coming in from the indoor unit and these are your power leads for your uh, condensing fan motor. So just make sure you put pull everything off and put it back where it was on the new board. And then this one right here is my coil sensor, uh, the yellow one right here, and then the ambient sensor. So I'm actually doing the board and I did these two sensors. I always do the sensors at the same time. Um, it's just easier to do it all at once and the sensors only cost a couple dollars more. Um, but to kind of show you this one right here for the ambient sensor, um, just goes down right here. You just loosen up this little guy right here and you can kind of actually see the sensor is just hanging down right there. Um, here's actually the old one. You can kind of see the sensor is actually kind of interesting the way it looks, but this is actually the sensor right here at the tip. Um, but yeah. This one's pretty easy to do. Um, and then it literally just slides off and on like that. Um, but yeah, really easy to do. And then the one for the coil sensor is this guy feeds through right there, goes through all the way through down. And you're gonna wanna make sure you zip tie in here. Uh, you'll probably have to cut zip ties to get the old one out and you're gonna wanna zip tie the new one to get it all back in. Uh, what can happen is while this runs it everything vibrates obviously and you can actually get shorts in these sensors um, or other wires in here uh, when it rubs it against the copper so I try to make sure all the points are zip tied where it's coming in contact with everything um, and it literally just slides through this you can see this tube right here this tube on the right it actually just slides right in there um, and that's how it's sensing the coil temperature. Um, once you get everything all back in, uh, actually I just want to show you one more thing. This plug right here, as soon as you disconnect it, it should kill power going to this board, which you can kind of see. So yeah, it's up to you. I mean, it's probably safest, just so you don't have to worry about any electrical short to go downstairs to the indoor unit and kill power to that. So you don't have any low voltage coming up here at all. Um, is, is probably the safer route just so you don't have to worry about any shorts or anything like that taking out something mounts while you're doing the repair um, so yeah i'd recommend shutting off the indoor and the outdoor just to get power shut off to everything um, after i get this in i'll go down to the thermostat now since everything's installed and i'll turn on the thermostat and put it into a call for heat um, and then as it's running you can jump around these two pins down here. You can kind of see there's a little, let's see if I can get it to actually focus on it. It's hard to kind of see on that board. I'm gonna see if I can pull out the old board and get a better shot. So yeah, like you can see these three pins right here. Um, what I'll usually do is I'll take a screwdriver and you just tap and touch these two together and it'll put it into a call for defrost. Um, when you have that going on, you should hear it going to defrost. The condensing fan motor will stop, and you'll hear it's kind of going to be noisier and a little more of a growl in the compressor, um, but it'll go through defrost, and 
if it's been running for a while when it does kick back on i forget exactly how long it's probably anywhere between three to five minutes it goes into defrost cycle um, when it turns back on um you'll see like, sometimes it'll shoot like a cloud of steam or a little bit of steam out because um, essentially what's happening is this reversing valve when it's if you have it in your call for heat it's going to flip and when it does that you're actually going to be sending your heat out here to this outdoor um, coil and then cooling to the indoor coil um, so that that's essentially melting um, all the ice or frost that's on the um, the outdoor coil um, so that's what we're going to be testing when we go through that test mode and then on the indoor like I said you'll have it cooling going so down here this little black wire that's coming off of um, the outdoor unit is going to go and send a call for heat down to the indoor unit to kick on the strip heat. So when that strip heat is running, um, <clears throat> you won't tell that the air conditioning is technically going on down there in that coil because if you have hot refrigerant out here, you're going to have the cold refrigerant down there. So uh, when it's in defrost, it's going to kick on your backup heat source. So if you have a gas furnace, it would kick on that. Or if you have electric heat, which is what we have here, it's going to kick on that to counterbalance so you're not feeling that cold air down there. Um, <clears throat> so another thing to check when you're testing it in that defrost is if you can get to your indoor unit uh, quickly enough, you want to make sure your backup heat is kicking on because it should be kicking on your backup heat in the test mode. Um, so. If all that looks good, I mean, your repair is good and done. Um, if it's not, you're going to have to start kind of testing some stuff with volt with a voltmeter. So say you're going into defrost mode and you're not getting a call downstairs and your strip heat's not coming on, which is actually what the original problem was here. Um, if that's happening, you're going to have to start testing, you know, if you're actually getting a call back or if something's going on with your strip heat or backup heat. Um, out here also, I mean, if you're, something's acting funny, um, you're just going to have to kind of really do some more diagnostic but um, this is a pretty easy straightforward way to um, replace that defrost board and your ambient and defrost or your coil sensor um, but yeah this is a pretty standard fix for people who have heat pumps uh, this is like Pacific Northwest area this is a really common repair that gets done I'd say fairly often throughout the winter you, you come out to a call and the things a big ice ball and you'll test it and um, that's typically what you're going to find. Um, I'm going to actually run down and just put this into a call and uh, for heat and just kind of cycle it on now. And uh, I'll try to get some more video footage of that here uh, coming up. So I got this system running now uh, in a call for heat. Uh, I'm going to put it into that defrost like I was talking about. So uh, I'm just going to use this guy right here. And... Uh, touch it right there and hold it oh, hold it and it should there you go now it's going into a call for defrost you can see the condensing fan motor now is slowing down it's actually stopping uh, it's getting ready to go into defrost uh, it should take a few seconds here and it should kick on you'll hear compressor kick back on any second here uh, that compressor should be kicking on. Always takes a lot longer when you're watching it. Um, so there it goes, the compressor is running, the condensing fan motor is stopped. Um, a kind of a quick hand test you can do is just by touching the pipe. You should feel this pipe here that's going to your outdoor coil. It should be getting warm. Um, it is definitely getting warm. And this one right here, should be getting cold almost like in a call for cooling which it definitely is um, so that right now is in a call for defrost um, so it's a pretty quick call right now um, on that test mode right there it already kind of actually went through the test mode so um, with that being said that should kind of take care of it on this so I mean everything looked good that I wanted to see on this quick test uh, the only thing I need to test real quick um, is making sure I'm getting power down to my strip heat um, so that's kind of the last little test I'm going to do to make sure I am getting power um, down there in defrost mode 
but that's kind of everything on this repair. It's a pretty str simple, straightforward, easy repair to do. Um, a lot of this extra stuff I'm doing is just kind of making sure it's testing so that I don't want to come back for any callback stuff. But um, obviously if you're just running your system, you're gonna know fairly quickly um, if something isn't working right. Um, if you're not having that backup heat kick on, one thing you're really gonna notice is the, um, it's gonna be cold. So when it goes in defrost, it'll almost be like air conditioning mode. So it'll be heating really good and then out of nowhere it's gonna get colder than all heck, blown out probably like 40 degree air inside. So it's just something you're gonna know right away if it's not right. Um, and it'll just take a little bit more diagnosing if that is the case. But um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Any questions, that sh um, feel free to ask them down in the comment section. Uh, please subscribe, it really helps me out and I really appreciate it. Um, I know heat pumps when I got into, I was really fearful of them initially because they just seem more complicated in air conditioning, but once you've worked on some and you get used to working on them, they're really not that bad. Um, you just gotta not freak yourself out about it. So um, thanks again for watching guys.